All right, welcome back to the channel. Max Torno here from Seven Figure Business Consulting. In this video, I want to talk about organic growth explosion on your uh, social media across all platforms. If you currently feel, oh, I'm so overwhelmed because there's so many platforms for me to promote my online coaching, consulting, or agency business, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, and so on and so forth. How can one person alone even post so much creative content out there. Well, I'm going to show my quote unquote secrets with you. Uh, I've been posting on social media for almost 10 years now, built two seven figure businesses on top of paid advertising plus organic growth on social media. So I know a thing or two about that. And uh, it's quite windy here today on the uh, 20th floor of our little uh, home office. So that's why we got this little dead cat out here and uh, hope the sound is pretty good though. So anyways, let's crack right into it. The secret is actually that you can absolutely recycle content. I really want to emphasize that with that first point here. You can absolutely recycle content across all platforms. However, it has to be done right. And that's kind of the point of this video now. I see this a lot that people, you know, they start posting on one platform and that's their preferred platform. You know, maybe you like Facebook the most, maybe you like the YouTube videos the most. And then what you do, what I see a lot of people doing is they just, you know, they post a YouTube link to Facebook and then they post that on Instagram as a swipe up and then they post the link on, on LinkedIn and so on and so forth right off the bat. Forget about posting links. Platforms hate when you link away from their platform, especially when you link to a competitive platform. It ruins the algorithm, ruins your profile. Don't do that. But at the same time, it's just such a lazy way to do it. And it's a lazy, stupid way of doing things because you can still be lazy, but actually do it right. So yeah, so secret number one basically is it's absolutely possible to recycle content. Number two, secret number two is to recycle content in a way so you're actually natively doing it for each and every platform. And I'm gonna tell you what exactly I mean by that. It's starting to rain a little bit too, huh? crazy isn't that wasn't that on the last video we had thunder yeah. <laughs> thunder and, and lightning striking it's crazy but uh yeah i hope i'm not gonna get hit by lightning here <laughs> so um yeah you want to use the platform natively for what it's used so what you can basically do is you use the idea the thought that you want to convey in each piece of content and you're conveying it to each platform natively so Funnily enough, I've literally made this content that I'm giving you right now via YouTube video also via a Facebook group post, for example. So I posted in a, in a third party group and um, I posted it as a simple text based uh, post and then just had a couple bullet points, an intro, an enticing headline and, you know, an outro where, you know, wish people, uh, I hope they had a great Tuesday or something like that. And um, I could do the exact same thing. And I think I even did that with a podcast episode, 10 minute podcast episode that is a little bit more on the ranty side, a little less on the bullet pointy side, but it's exactly the same thought pattern. So what you basically want to understand is you want to understand what works best on what platform and also how scrollable is each and every platform. YouTube is much less of a scrollable platform. People go to YouTube with the intention of watching a video that is on average around 9 to 11 minutes long. People don't have that same intention on Facebook, for example. Facebook is a very scrollable platform, right? How many times are you using Facebook on your phone and you just scroll through it and you're like, oh, here's a post, here's this, here's that. Now, if you would go ahead and post a lengthy 10-minute YouTube-esque video, even if you would download your YouTube video and then you would upload it natively to Facebook, it won't get as much engagement because people are just not on the platform to watch a long video. What you can do is, because video still works very well for Facebook, Facebook hates YouTube, their biggest competitor, one of their biggest ones. So they try to push uh, video, but you gotta make it shorter due to the scrollability and the scrolling behavior of your audience on there. What other things could work for Facebook in and of itself is if you just use a text-based post via bullet points like I've explained above. That also works very, very well. Instagram, on the other hand, is still a heavily, heavily, uh, a heavy, heavy, uh, image heavy platform. That means even though they're trying to push videos and IGTV, it has the same issue than Facebook that people just don't want to watch a 10 minute video because they're scrolling through Facebook. So, uh, because they're scrolling through Instagram. So what I would do here is, um, a professional looking picture of you or a picture that just fits to your offer and your audience and you could use that exact same piece of content as a caption down below because interestingly enough 
what the Instagram algorithm does is it, it measures how long people hover over your post. So when they scroll through their feed and then they see your post and then they read the caption, right? And they click the show more button and they hover over that for a long time because what you write is enticing, is interesting, is really speaking to the audience. Instagram notices that and it, the algorithm will favor your profile, right? So you have to basically kind of understand what are the strengths of each and every platform. LinkedIn, on the other hand, is something that people choose more consciously. LinkedIn is not necessarily a scroll platform. It does have a feed now. They implemented that feature a couple of months or a couple of years even ago. Um, but it's still something that people kind of opt in more uh, more purposefully, right? It's less of a, like, let me check my LinkedIn and scroll while I'm waiting for the elevator. Usually people sit down to go on LinkedIn, check their own profile, check their engagements, check uh, uh, their connections and so on and so forth. So on there, what you could do, for example, is use that exact same piece of content, but you make a little bit of a long form article, a three to five minute read, for example. Articles are very, very strong on LinkedIn because again, people choose more consciously to be on there. So yeah, this is literally my lazy man's guide uh, on how you can use the same idea, but at the same time not recycle it in a, in, a, in a less effective way, but you're recycling it in a way where you really use the platform strengths to your advantage. And at the same time, you don't have to sit around now and uh, you know come up with a, a new topic for each and every platform. And by the way, before we get to the, to the, to the last point here, if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and check out my podcast. If you kind of want to see, okay, well, how does Max use the podcast platform natively? Feel free to check it out. We're going to link it down below or maybe show a link somewhere here right there. Uh, podcast is something where I usually go deeper on one specific topic. Again, here, podcast, podcasts are a much more um, a conscious choice for people. They don't just scroll around and what podcast am I going to listen to? They go on a podcast platform to willingly listen to a specific type of podcast. So in a podcast, you can go deeper on on a specific topic. On YouTube, I always kind of tackle surface level. I give two, three, four tips, right? And I bring these out to the audience, to you, the dear viewer. But on podcast, I can go deeper on one specific aspect and kind of rant a little bit more on that. And, you know, feel free to check that out. Strongly recommend. I've been told it's very informative, but at the same time, also very... Um, entertaining. I also often have, have our uh, business partner Nikita Gunkovic on there to kind of share his perspective from a little bit of a sales slash COO perspective. So I highly recommend you checking it out. Uh, so yeah, basically you can absolutely be quote unquote lazy uh, with uh, posting on your social media. And the cool thing is once you really mastered the way of posting on each platform and once you've really seen the patterns you can systemize your approach for that and then later on as you're getting a social media team you can actually instruct your social media team to take out that specific content and adapt it to make it native for each and every platform so at this position where we are right now we're making multiple seven figures a year i have a three men strong full-time social media team Three and a half, basically we have a back office worker assisting with the posting of things. But they're, for example, instructed with internal trainings, they're automatically being trained for that of like, you know, take uh, take the podcast, edit it, edit the intro and outro in it, cut out the most important 15 second segment, create an Instagram story from that and so on and so forth. You could take that idea even further and you say, okay, you hire someone who literally just distills their YouTube videos into articles, summarizes them nicely, gives them cool headlines, does a little bit of co copywriting magic on top of that and then releases those. So theoretically, you can absolutely scale that, but at the very bottom of this has to be your understanding of how these how these social media networks are working and how you can actually leverage their strengths. So ultimately, if you want to know how to exactly grow with your own social media accounts in a way that you don't just attract a bunch of people that are not in your audience, but actually how to attract an affluent audience and how to have that affluent part of your audience actually engage with what you're posting so they want to become your client, then I invite you to watch my free training video over on my website. That will teach you the exact five steps that you need to know in order to grow your business, scale your business, automate your business so you ultimately can increase your revenue while at the same time decrease the amount of time that you have to personally put in. So uh, we're going to link it down below or show the URL somewhere here right now. This is a 10 to 13 minute free training video. You can watch that uh, over on the website. And uh, yeah, it will be very, very beneficial for you if you're an online coach, consultant or agency owner. And uh, yeah, you want to grow and scale your business. So uh, I see you over there. I want to thank you very much for watching and uh, talk soon.